Okay, it's 1600 UDC, I think. Welcome everyone. Good to see you all. I see some new names. Very really good. So today we have our second webinar on uh, trigeminal neuralgia and neuropathy treatment with common therapy. So I hope you had a chance to come back and review the first webinar, which we did on November 1st. We uploaded the recording on YouTube, so you should you should be uh, getting a link to that uh, webinar. So, and today we have uh, two more presentations. The first presentation will be about the clinical experience of treating coma therapy at our clinic called the uh, Technologia Жизни or Technology of Life in uh, Altai, South Siberia, Russia. Uh, and that presentation will be given by uh, Dr. Anna Surazakova, uh, my wife. Uh, but since she wasn't able to give it to you live in English, so what we did is that we pre-recorded it in uh, Russian, then we have subtitles and we dubbed it in English, so Gara did a fantastic job. So uh, it's a long presentation, 45 minutes, and there's a lots of lots of information there, lots of clinical experience, lots of uh, uh, details on which protocols in which situations. So, what I would say uh, today, if you don't understand, if you cannot memorize everything, don't worry. Just focus on what you need today. If we answered your questions, so you can. Uh, type in a chat your question and we'll come back to them later. So the first presentation will be by Dr. Anna and the second presentation will be given by Garrett Murin, our um, regional manager for North America. He's there in green, uh, green short. So Garrett also have a very packed, packed presentation with lots of information. Again, it may seem a bit overwhelming to get all the details, maybe from the first take. Uh, no worries, so we will have the video and maybe you know come back to it a couple times to review all the details and all the um, aspects of treatments because Garrett will be talking about uh, how to treat, when to treat, uh, which device to use, and all the different situations. Okay, so uh, Maxim, do we need anything before we get going? You good? Okay, okay. All right, so I'll switch over to the video and uh, we'll play the video presentation by Anna. Uh, perhaps, you know, just a couple of words about our center. Um, about uh, what six years ago, uh, when I came back to Altai, this is my home uh, home part of Russia in South Siberia. We created this uh, treatment center for coma therapy. We called it uh, Technology of Life, and we had that, that center, that clinic, as an outpatient clinic. So people would come there, get have their treatments done, and then go back home. So this way we worked for a number of years and Anna worked as a medical director uh, of that clinic. So this is why, you know, she can speak of her, from her own experience. Uh, now, the city where we lived, where we had our center, is fairly small. Uh, it's called Gornaltaisk, maybe 150,000 people. So fairly small city. And when it comes to trigeminal neurology, it's not that frequent, uh, you know, in general population. So, but the cases we do have who came to our clinic, they were very interesting, very interesting. And again, a whole range from somebody who had just had it recently to someone who had it for many years, 10, 10 15 years. Okay, so you should be able to see um, the video. My name is Anna Surazakova. I'm a medical doctor specializing in rehabilitation in both physical medicine and restorative medicine. This field of medicine focuses on the restoration of health both during and after disease or injury as well as disease prevention. 
I've been in practice since 2001, and I've been working with coma therapy since 2017. I work in a number of areas of medicine in order to understand the entire process of healing at different stages. So I started my career in the emergency department, in intensive care unit, then as a general practitioner in an inpatient and outpatient clinic, in geriatrics with elderly patients, in gynecology with pregnant women. I also worked in rehabilitation departments, which is the area of medicine I decided to specialize in. Beginning in 2017, I immersed myself into restorative medicine as a specialist and became the head of the Department of Rehabilitation, where I worked with difficult patients, that is, people who could not move, they were bedridden, they couldn't take care of themselves. They were helped by medical staff and their relatives. This is what we call stage two of rehabilitation in Russia. There I specialized in two areas, neurology and traumatology. Our neurology patients were post-stroke patients with all kinds of neuropathies such as Bell's palsy, trigeminal neuralgia, traumatic neuropathy after, for example, surgical reconstruction of bones, replacement of joints, and so on. At the same time, I started to work with coma therapy in an outpatient clinic for restorative medicine called Technologia Zizhny, or Technology of Life. Patients would come to this outpatient clinic, have their treatments done, and then go home. Or they rented devices and did their treatments at home. Now I'm the CEO of Technologia Zizhny, and we're transitioning into a new form of work. Work that I consider the best methods of cooperating with patients, where they don't come to us, to the hospital or to the clinic for treatments, but instead they treat themselves using coma therapy device, devices at home. We're active, actively promoting this new form of working with patients. Our patients like it and are actively engaged and have good results. In Russia, restorative medicine is one of the fundamental parts of medicine. Its main goal is to recover the human being, not only physically, but as a whole person after disease or trauma. Because without full rehabilitation and restoration of an individual, disease becomes chronic and reduces the quality of life. For achieving that goal, we doctors focus on three main aspects. Naturally, the first main aspect is restoration of function of organs or tissues. Through regeneration that is present in every organism, in every cell. In other words, we support the body using different methods and devices to restore its self-regulation and thereby restart the suspended or delayed process of regeneration. The next key aspect is restoration of the body as a system. 
More precisely, restoration of its systemic functional reserves, meaning its ability to fight disease now and in the future. Because without a systemic approach to the restoration of the organism, unfortunately we see that disease becomes chronic. Conditions appear, complications appear even after minor diseases, and in general individuals tend to get ill much more frequently. The third aspect is that a person with a disease needs to correct their relationships with themselves and the world around them. A person is very much changed under pressure and stress of having a disease. Until we support him or her to clearly see and address this, the effects of treatments of any method will often be incomplete or short-term. As a result, the disease doesn't go away, instead it becomes chronic, and personality is changed and the person drops out of society, closes down, drops out from his normal life, stops evolving, and his life becomes hard, that is, difficult or stagnant. Therefore, all these three aspects are crucial parts of restorative medicine. Today I'd like to talk about restoration from various types of neuropathy. I'll present several cases from our clinical experience of using chromotherapy to treat trigeminal neuropathy, facial neuropathy, and neuropathy of inconclusive origin. In the recovery of nerves, of nerve cells, during all stages of healing, the most important thing is to support regeneration. In my practice as a specialist in restorative medicine in Russia, I have a variety of biophysical instruments and methods. Therapies that use magnets, low-level lasers, ultrasound, light of different colors, electrotherapy, uh, etc. Thanks to such a wide diversity of methods, for any condition we always select and combine two or three methods for best results. Also, in support of regeneration, we use not only biophysical methods, but also other therapies such as medications, massage, and therapeutic exercises. We all use all these to resume the process of regeneration, to strengthen it, and to make a self-sufficient and self-sustaining process. Comotherapy is the main method in my clinical practice because for me as a specialist in restorative medicine, it's an effective and versatile tool that addresses several key tasks at the same time. And it helps me to support self-sufficiency in my patients so that they're active in their own process and they can decide by themselves how and when to treat consciously taking responsibility for their health. This becomes possible because, first of all, the Delta device is very safe to use. The combination of the several low-level radiances and Comer device is done in such a way that they are completely safe. You can use it in a clinic as well as at home. You just need to follow some basic and simple rules. You don't need specialized rooms with protective screens or need to wear special safety glasses. <clears throat> All of these bells and whistles, really, they become unnecessary. This is very important because some of the technologies have very strict requirements and safety rules that are very difficult to fulfill, so I can't recommend them for use at home. The next important thing is which radiances are used in coma therapy. There are four radiances chosen, 
that I had already used very often in my practice before Comra, but I used them separately in sequential treatment sessions or as combined devices with, for example, laser and magnetic field or laser and color therapy. So it's quite difficult to combine them, to calculate appropriate dosages for each device, and one needs specialized education for this. Obviously, it's not for an ordinary person. But you don't need to do this in the case of Comra. You don't need to have a special medical education and a degree in medical biophysics in order to apply this technology. Next, I'll share with you several different clinical cases which show that, regardless of duration of disease, be it 2, 5, or 15 years, we can always use coma therapy. There are always positive long-term curative effects, and as the symptoms disappear, the patients achieve their desired goal. Also, regardless of specific diagnoses and which nerves are injured, we recommend sometimes there are other diseases present or when using other therapies, coma is always recommended. Why? Because it's very versatile and can be combined with practically any other therapy. It can be used for pre and post surgery with any type of medications. If you're on a diet, undergoing acupuncture or any type of detox, it's easy to integrate coma therapy into any therapeutic program. And as a bonus, coma amplifies the curative effect of any other therapy. Because it's a coherent combination of low-level physical radiances. So it's really a gem in any therapeutic toolbox. So now to our clinical cases. First one, a 60-year-old female, trigeminal neuralgia. She came to us with the diagnosis of acute trigeminal neuralgia on the right, having had it for a week. She came to us really wanting to eliminate the symptoms. Her complaints were moderate, periodic pain during the day in the face on the right side. She was at home during that week and did not seek help from any physicians. She didn't use any specialized treatments except painkillers and gentle, general anti-inflammatory drugs. Here in Russia, patients tend to use such painkillers and anti-inflammatory drugs by themselves once they've tried them successfully in the past. After examination at her clinic, she was recommended a course of coma therapy of 10 sessions with the Delta 980 nanometer soft. Protocols were Neurology 4 and Universal 7. Universal 7 is for the whole body support. Neurology 4 is for local treatment. Local means place of localization of the symptoms. The patient decided to actively participate, meaning she read how to do the treatments, studied the protocols, and used the device by herself. So she actively engaged in treatment. That, of course, strengthens the results. After the third treatment, the patient noticed that the pain had significantly reduced. The pain appeared only at night for short for a short while, and the painkillers were not used. At the end of the course, she noticed that all symptoms were gone. Please note that in this case, her treatment started soon after symptoms appeared. A short course was enough to eliminate symptoms and arrest development of a local pathologic process. 
мы, получается, помогаем организму вот этот процесс регенерации поддерживать, усиливать и процесс... And with universal protocols for systemic support, we're able to normalize self-regulation of the organism and prevent the illness from becoming chronic. Even a small number of sessions can be enough. The next clinical case. A 54-year-old female came to us with a diagnosis of chronic trigeminal neuralgia on the left side, two years of illness. The complaints were sharp pain attacks in the left side of her face every day. Attacks were triggered by any cause. It was almost anything, be it a smile, a turn of the head, a phone call. Anything could provoke the pain. Her goal was to eliminate current symptoms, that is, the pain. That was what was important for her. She had the disease for two years with periodic worsening, mostly in the spring and autumn. At the time, she was taking painkillers, analgesics, and general anti-inflammatory drugs. The concomitant disease was hypertension. She noted that during hypertensive crises, particularly in times of stress, she also had trigeminal attacks. She was recommended comotherapy protocols, neurology 3 and 4, and Universal 3 for systemic bodily support. The patient also actively participated, studied how to do the treatments, held the device, held the device, and did the treatments herself. After the second session, she noticed that acute pain attacks during the day were gone. Only in the evening at night, she had short duration pain attacks. After nine sessions in her clinic, her symptoms were completely gone. Considering the chronic nature of her condition and following the doctor's recommendations, she decided to continue treatment. She rented the device and used it at her home for three more days. She said that she did treatments several times per day in order to get healthy faster and stay in that state longer. Again, in this case you can see that the patient was active, studied how to do the treatments and used the device herself despite her pain. This was helpful in reducing symptoms faster and she felt safe and comfortable enough to continue treatments at home. That allowed her to extend the course up to 12 sessions, and the patient achieved what she wanted. The pain was gone. Next clinical case, a 65-year-old male came to our clinic, also with chronic trigeminal neuralgia on the right side. He had this condition for 15 years. He's not so much aiming at healing the disease, but he had to prepare for a visit to the dentist. He was really concerned that due to his neuralgia, he will not be able to complete all the dental procedures. So he came to our clinic, we'll say proactively. He complained about pain in the exact area of the lower jaw where he needed to have the dental procedures performed. Pain also appeared to radiate towards the back of his neck and when food would get inside the cavities in his teeth. 
On, our first visit, on his first visit to our clinic, he had pain in the area of his jaw with diseased teeth that morning. And you can see his trigeminal neuralgia was complicated by problems with his teeth and the pain in the neck. So we considered all of that when putting together the treatment protocols for him. We prescribe not only neurology 4 for trigeminal neuralgia, but also treatment for the other locations with pain. Mostly, it was the musculoskeletal structures around the upper back, neck, and head. So his protocol included scanning of the paravertebral and upper back areas, plus two points on the back of the head. And the meridian terminal was also added for the head, which is now discontinued, but we use it in our clinic. The patient had six sessions. After the fourth session, he went to the dentist because the pain was no longer bothering him. When he came to us after visiting the dentist, he said that he was able to go through the dental procedure without any problem. He had not had a trigeminal pain attack. So he was able to continue visiting the dentist's office and finish his treatments there. The patient's goal was achieved and there was no intensification of pain, the pain that he was afraid of. In addition to that, recovery after the dental procedures was supported by coma treatments that activated regeneration in the area. So he was very relieved not to experience fear that we all know of visits to the dentist and the pain from mechanical dental interventions. So the next case, a 68-year-old female came to us with chronic neuralgia on both sides involving the second and third branches if we're talking in medical terms. She had frequent periodic pain attacks and had the condition for 15 years. The initial cause of neuralgia was osteomyelitis of the jaw over a two-year period. So, although she fully recovered from that disease, as a complication, trigeminal neuralgia appeared. During the last 15 years, she had attacks mostly in autumn and spring. Attacks were also provoked by pain in the back or joints or emotional stress. She used painkillers and anti-inflammatory drugs, as many of our patients do. These drugs can easily be bought over-the-counter at any pharmacy. And typically our patients come to us before resorting to the more drastic medications. For this patient, we recommended several protocols. In addition to acute pain on the right side, closer to the ear, and the entire left cheek, the patient also had periodic pain in the upper back, neck, right knee, and both hips. These multiple locations of pain were due to severe chronic, several chronic diseases. The main one was diabetes mellitus. This disease frequently leads to its own neuropathy. And that neuropathy involves peripheral nervous system and diabetes always slows down and impedes regeneration, making recovery a very difficult and prolonged process. 
Taking into account all her chronic diseases, we included all the locations with pain into her protocol. We recommended neurology 4 on both sides, traumatology 1 for the entire back, traumatology 10 for her painful knee joint. As for her hips, with diabetic sensory neuropathy, we added scanning for 5 minutes at variable frequency. We use both the Delta 905 Strong and the Delta 980 Soft. The Delta 905 Strong was used in traumatology because it provides a more intense effect. For the other points, we used the Delta 980 Soft. The patient had 11 sessions in total. For, for the hips, only four sessions were needed before the symptoms were gone. After the fourth and fifth sessions, the patient indicated that the pain in the hips was gone. The pain in the face significantly decreased on both the left and right, and the pain in the back almost gone. After the tenth treatment, she did not notice any pain in any part of the body. Note that we need to treat all the painful areas because when there's many areas, when there are many of them, it's difficult for the body to recover. It's difficult for the body to maintain recovery of several organs at the same time and heal itself. In such situations, we need to consider not only the most painful areas, but also all the other organs and tissue that may, be, that may contribute to the pathologic process. For the systemic support, we included the Universal 3 protocol. Even in such severe case with many comorbid conditions, comotherapy showed very good results. The patient achieved her goal of eliminating the symptoms. And the next clinical case shows that when, when it comes to the application of comotherapy, often you don't need to wait for results of diagnostic tests, a differential diagnosis, or even look for specific causes. A mother came to us with a five-year-old boy. For about two weeks, she noted some twitching on his face, frequent blinking, and drooping of the right corner of his mouth. When he was crying, had slept poorly, or was emotionally stressed, the symptoms got much worse. Based on the symptom complex, the neurologist in our clinic established involvement of injury, both to the facial and trigeminal nerve on the right side, and possibly caused by a perinatal injury to the nervous system. Of course, several diagnostic tests were prescribed, but we started comotherapy without waiting for the results of those tests. We used the Delta 905 strong device for local treatment, following with the Neurology 4 protocol. Before starting the first session, we could see very visible twitches on the boy's face, but after finishing the treatment, we immediately saw that the intensity had decreased significantly. The twitching was barely visible. Mother learned how to apply the Comra device and decided to take it home. It's much more comfortable for a mother and her child to do treatments at home. We can even instruct a child how to hold the sunshine 
in place properly to help the process. After three days of treatments at home, all the symptoms were gone, so she decided not to go for the extended diagnostic tests. It was recommended to watch closely to see if the symptoms come back after three to four months due to the rapid development of the child's nervous system and to come back to the clinic again if that happens. The symptoms didn't reappear and all of us were very happy. That was a sign that everything is okay with the child. The next clinical case is a 79-year-old female with chronic facial and trigeminal neuropathy on the left side for 20 years. So in this case, we'll look at two nerves damaged at the same time. We could not establish which nerve was damaged first and which was second. Even without knowing, we started the treatment. The goal of the patient was to alleviate the symptoms. She had had the condition for 20 years with flare-ups in the autumn and spring, often provoked by back pain. She also had degenerative spinal disease. So when her back was aching, she also was feeling the pain in her face. She was taking over-the-counter painkillers for the pain. At the time of her first visit, she complained about severe constant pain on the left side of her face and facial asymmetry. That was the sign that two nerves were affected. The patient was recommended a coma therapy course of 10 sessions with the Delta 980 Soft and a course of massage for her back. Because she has a lot of issues with her spine. Because of the two ner nerves, Neurology 3 and 4 were used, plus Universal 5. After the third session, the patient noticed that the pain decreased significantly, becoming periodic instead of constant, and having less of an impact on the quality of her daily life. After the tenth session, the pain was gone completely. Only little twitches remained, but the twitches didn't bother her too much and disappeared after several minutes when they, when they happened. The patient rented the device and continued to treat herself at home for another 14 days, same protocols, also treating her back. When she returned the device, she shared she had a very marked positive effect using it and she was comfortable doing the treatments at home. She liked it very much and was in a very positive mood because all her pain was gone. In this clinical case, we can see that the patient understood the coma method. And even with such a long-standing chronic disease, which involves several nerves, plus other painful conditions, the patient was able to continue treatments at home. So, altogether, she had a continuous course of 24 treatments. That helped to eliminate the current symptoms and also to initiate a long-term restorative process. This gave her a long-lasting pain-free period and extended effect of the restoration of the functional reserve, leading to gradual recovery of the whole body and the alleviation of other chronic illnesses. The next clinical case is specifically about neuropathy of the facial nerve. Male, 66 years old, sought help with Bell's palsy on the left. He consulted a neurologist right away on the third day after the symptoms appeared. He was hospitalized in the Department of Rehabilitation where I worked. 
Together with a neurologist, we developed the treatment program, starting with small doses of medication for pain relief and anti-inflammation. And from the first day, we started comotherapy. On the day three to four, when his condition had stabilized, we added therapeutic exercises, which included facial massage. All these methods, methods supported the process of recovery, reversal of the symptoms, and a very positive effect. The patient had the first course of treatment in the rehabilitation department, so before hospitalization he had facial asymmetry and a moderate pain in the left side of his face, continuous lacrimation, tears, limited movement of his lips, with a sense of numbness and drooping of the left side of his face. I'm smiling because I should not be showing it on myself. And he was not able to fully close his left eyelid. So we used the Delta 905 Strong, a coma therapy device. And because it was such an acute and intensive pathologic process, we used a combination of neurology three and four protocols one in the morning, one in the evening, and Universal 3. The patient actively participated in the treatment. He learned how to do it, do it and held the device himself. He showed up for all the treatment sessions, so his recovery was happening quite fast. By the time he was discharged from the hospital, the facial pain had disappeared and movement of facial muscles was painless. Recovery of the muscle movement was about 80% compared to the healthy side of the face. Corners of the lips aligned, facial asymmetry was nearly completely gone. The eyelid was closing almost completely, only two to three millimeters remained. The patient was recommended to repeat Comra or other physiotherapy treatments in two to three months in an outpatient clinic. However, he didn't do that and came to us, to our center, five and a half months later, at which time he had had his second course. But before the second course, it turned out that by the third month, he was again feeling pain. However, since the pain was minor and periodic, he didn't seek help from a doctor and he didn't take any pain medication. By the third or fourth month, the left eyelid and facial asymmetry problems reappeared again. And so he came back for treatments. Not when he was recommended to, which was considering the capacity of the nervous system to regenerate, but when he himself decided to. So naturally, he came back to us with symptoms. To repeat, recurring facial pain, the left eyelid was not closing completely, drooping of the left corner of the mouth. We recommended neurology 4 and neurology 1 scanning at the back of the head, neck, upper shoulders at 50 hertz for 10 minutes. He actively participated in his treatment. And after completing the second course of treatment, the pain was completely gone. The left eyelid was closing with only a one millimeter gap left. And there was no more lacrimation, tears, which he had during the first couple of days the corner of his mouth positioned properly, cheek and face fully symmetric. Facial movement was good and facial expression recovered. I'd like to point out several key points in this clinical case. The nervous system, nervous tissue, has its own inherent physiologic capacity to regenerate and it takes a very long time. It's a normal quality of the nervous system. Naturally, we take this into account when we use different methods to compile a comprehensive program to treat this disease. 
То есть данного пациента прям четко видно, что In this clinical case, we can see that when the body has stabilized its condition, pain and inflammation are under control. У него стали симптомы исчезать. And the symptoms start to disappear. The organism is actively engaged in self regeneration. И насколько ему хватило For as long as there are sufficient functional reserves, but when the symptoms reappear and increase, it is always a signal that at this moment we need to resume the treatments with coma therapy, because the organism is showing us that it was capable of healing up until this point. But the reserves are now depleted, so in order to go on to the next stage and recover, treatment is required. There's no need to wait until symptoms worsen significantly, like this patient did. After two courses of treatment, we were able to prevent the symptoms from becoming chronic, but had he come earlier, he could have achieved recovery much sooner and prevented any worsening of his condition. This worsening means that, once again, he's losing some of the nerve and muscle functions and risking deeper tissue damage. If he had waited too long, there's a risk of a return to the initial symptoms, with the damage to the nerves becoming permanent and the disease becoming chronic. Relapse in diseases means that the repair of structure and function stops. So, for example, if he had a cold, some nerve fibers could have been irreversibly damaged and the face asymmetry become much more persistent and Bell's palsy persisting for a longer period. So, when many courses are recommended, please follow the recommendations. The nervous system has this particular characteristic. It needs a very long time to heal, both when disease is recent or chronic. When we use coma therapy, we stabilize the condition, improve quality of life, support the living nerve fibers, as well as prevent death of those fibers that were injured, thereby saving their function. So, in this case, I wanted to emphasize this important point. Thank you for your attention. In conclusion, this method of treatment is very versatile, safe, and most importantly, you can do the treatments yourself. This way you're no longer dependent on a doctor, a medical specialist. It's a very important and big step in medicine, at least here in Russia. People can find methods and devices to use at home, so they can, so that they themselves can actively participate in the healing process and to support their body in self-repair. This is the foundation for restoring health holistically as a whole human being. Because any pathologic process always affects our thoughts and emotions. Try, ask for support, and don't be afraid. The device is portable, light, and easy to use. As a medical doctor, I'll continue to use this method and further participate in developing new treatment protocols, as well as clinical research with this exciting technology. That was Anna's uh, presentation. So, again, um, I found it very interesting myself when I was when I translating. Help of Dimitri here. Gareth. Um, Lots of lots of uh, very good clinical experience, and I'm sure you'll come back to it uh, to this video uh, again. Just to emphasize one more point, I'd like to add to Anna what she was sharing, because in the clinic, um, it's just the way how the clinic is organized. The people have uh, have to come to the clinic to get their treatments, and sometimes they have to travel from a distant village, but they have to go by car for five six hours to get to our clinic. Uh, but when it comes to the trigeminal neuralgia with basically any neuropathy, we can achieve, as you saw, one, two, three weeks, fantastic, very good results. And that carries over for quite a few months. But then if the condition was chronic, if the condition had for a long time, 
you know, you should be aiming at making Comer part of your life, really. That's the ideal case. So this is why, you know, we found that we decided to transition to this new method of work. And sort of people coming to us over long distances and sometimes from other cities, you know, we said, no, let's, let's completely shift our focus to work with patients when they're at home. Because we found, you know, after working for three, four years in our center, it's actually the best. It's the, the best approach. And every time we saw uh, people actively engaging, they're learning the method and they're liking it. So that's when we get the best results. Okay. Um, so uh, let's switch over to Canada. And Garat has a presentation on the treatment approach, the protocols, devices. So Garat, over to you, please. Thank you, Arjan. Hello, everybody. It's kind of funny to sit there and listen to my own voice for uh, 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, okay, let me uh, get my screen set up here. I'll share my screen with you. And so Anna went through a lot of stuff. Thank you very much, Anna. And I'm going to go through more practical, because she said some words like universal three and universal five. So I'm going to go through those in a practical way to show you what this is all about, okay? So what we're going to go through is some of the specifics that Anna was speaking about with respect to protocols and recommendations. And I saw a few things in the chat about that. Uh, and specifically, we're going to go through the practical nuts and bolts about how to do this for yourself. And so we're going to go through a few different stages. And what we're going to look at is this. Ah, there, now it works. We're going to look at the trigeminal nerve, trigeminal neuralgia, and what we're actually doing when we treat. Because, okay, you take coma therapy, you put it on your face, but what's happening? And some people are visual learners, so I wanted to put, some of you might find these slides a bit graphic, but I wanted to put in what's actually under the skin and what's happening, what's happening when you put it on your face and it's going in through the skin into the tissues and what's in there, okay? And this is for some of you visual learners out there. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to go over devices, okay? Comotherapy devices that can be used. We're going to go over local treatments and what that means, systemic treatments and what that means, courses of treatment. In other words, what do we do uh, not only in the short term but over the long term? And then strategies because everybody's unique in their health challenge and how that what they need to tackle and their life situation and what's happening with their body so there's different strategies that we can talk about in a general way to address that now there's a lot of information in here today so don't worry about getting everything uh we will it's being recorded and it'll be up on youtube later so you can always come back to it if there's something specific that you're interested in for yourself that you might not catch because there's going to be a lot of information, like I say. So let me start with the Comer devices. So uh, when it comes to devices, all right, back on track. We have the Comer Delta, okay, and we have the Comer Palm. So it's really simple to do treatments. You're going to put this directly. And not for everybody, of course, because some of you, some people with trigeminal neuralgia, their face is so sensitive they can't touch it, either directly or very close to your skin. Now, when you're treating your face, your eyes will be closed, these kind of things, but we'll get into that. So when we look at the device, you'll see on here we have one, two, three, because this is a toggle switch, four buttons. We made coma therapy very simple and easy to use, and Anna touched on that because you remember she said, look, there's some devices, it's very complicated. You need a high degree of skill and co competence to use them, which makes them, you can't use them at home. But when it comes to coma therapy, because it's so simple and versatile, you can take this anywhere you're going, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So when it comes to treatments with the device, you have a choice between the coma delta and the coma palm. And with the delta, if you see here, this one says pro on it, okay? Can you see that there, okay? So that means this is the strong. 
So you're thinking, well, what do I need? What do I need to do? When you look at it, uh, the Comer Delta Strong would be for if you have severe chronic illness that's long term, you're going to want the strong. OK, if you had there's one case that person just just had uh, trigeminal neuralgia for two years. So fairly recent, you might not need the strong. Uh, Comra Palm is going to be for more general, uh, let's say, not so long standing issues. And because this will be in YouTube, there's going to be a link up here that's going to go through more detail on choosing between the Comra Delta and the Comra Strong. Uh, Maxim will put that link in there. And when you're using this, okay, let me go through it this way. Let's look at this. In the middle, you have the infrared laser, okay? Around the sides, you have the color LEDs in the magnetic field. And on the delta, these four gray round circles, that's the ultrasound. So whenever you're treating your body, your face, those radiances are going to be going into the tissue to treat your trigeminal nerve and everything going on there. All right. Now, when you're going to look at the treatments, you're going to see either a stationary point, which means you're going to put it, just hold it in one spot, or you're going to see lines on the diagram. We'll come back to it later, but I want to mention it now. That means you're going to move the device. It's a scan. We call it scanning. So how that looks like, and I'll just do it very slowly, because we, when we scan, and your eyes will be closed because it's on your face, and as long as your eyes are closed, it's fine. You don't need special safety glasses with coma therapy. So the scanning, I've seen people scan like this. It's not like that. So very slow. So I'm just moving my head very slowly. Okay? And you notice <laughs> I put my arm stationary and I move my head. So whichever way you want to do it, you can hold your head stationary and move your arm. And you'll also notice when you're scanning, you don't have to be, you don't need to press like against your head. You can just move it just off or just touching the skin. You know, all the little hairs on my skin, I can feel those moving when I'm scanning, okay? And the difference between the Comer Delta and the Comer Palm, you'll notice this has the ultrasound. This one does not have ultrasound. This has what we would call, this would be a gradual soft effect. This is a strong and fast effect, okay? So they're different. So that's a little bit about the devices. Uh, and Arjan, by the way, because this is gonna be referenced, if I don't say anything uh, and you say, hey, this is a good idea to put it in there because people can come back to it later, that's a good idea as well. So jump in anytime. And one thing I wanted to say about operation with the four buttons, very simple to use and, and on the palm, same, just three buttons. When you get it, even though there's only a few buttons, you'll probably feel overwhelmed because there's a lot of new information. But I assure you, you will learn to use it in very short order. It'll become second nature because what I find happens for people is that over time, Coma therapy surreptitiously works its way into their life. Whereas, you know, if it's some, what I mean is it's not that complicated. It's just that when it's new, there's a lot of information. So give yourself the space to learn and integrate that step by step without trying to force the issue. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the presentation now. When we look at the next thing, we looked at the devices. Now we're going to look at local treatment okay let me put this back oh and one thing i didn't mention for some people you'll notice here you can see my picture i'm not going to stop it here's the probe terminal for some people who have neuralgia on under tongue or under their tongue and these kind of things you can change with the delta that you can take off a terminal a medical terminal and then you can put the probe terminal on and you can put that in your mouth so that'll be applicable for some people not all people but some people okay Okay, so when it comes to local treatment, we want to know what we're treating. We want to know where to treat. We want to know how to treat, when to treat, and why. Okay, so we're going to go all through this. And I said, you know, for you visual learners, we're, I put some slides in here for you especially. And you'll see this first one. And I'm going to do some annotation on the slide here. This is the root of the trigeminal nerve that's 
inside your skull before it comes out into your face, okay? So this is where it actually, and you can picture your brain is right on top of here. And this is where it actually goes through the bone in your skull to start to come out into your jaw and your cheek and above your head. And so there's three branches that go through the skull out into your face in these areas. And this one goes out behind the eye because this is going to be the optic nerve up here. Remember in Arjan's presentation, uh, he showed the cross section of the nerve. So you can see this is a big nerve for the optic nerve. And then this root of the trigeminal nerve goes back in the head to this, what Arjan described last time as the, let's say, the midbrain, the real, the brain stem. Okay, so this is the old central part of the brain that the trigeminal nerve root emanates from, comes out of. Okay, so we want to treat all of the nerves. So we're going to be treating this area as well. And then when you look next, okay, let's orientate ourselves here. So this is the top of someone's skull is removed, okay? And this is the front, they're looking ahead. The eyes are here underneath this plate. So if you looked at my head, this would be this, this top part we're looking at here. And the blue here is where, the, remember I just showed you the picture of the optic nerve. So that's where the optic nerve goes through and then it comes to the back of the eye. And just below that, the trigeminal nerve, like I said, it goes through the skull and comes out into your face. And I'll show you that in the next diagram. And then comes back here to this brain stem. And that goes down here, okay? Why I'm showing you that is because part of the treatment, you're going to put the delta on the side of your head. And you can see, you're like, well, what am I putting the delta here for? The radiances are actually coming in through your brain, through your skull, and they're irradiating this area. To, and the reason for that, why we do the treatment? For that regeneration. Because remember, uh, Anna was speaking about it, Dr. Anna, and also Arjan, it's really we want to regenerate the nerve. And this is why Anna said, at any treatments we're doing with chromotherapy, they'll always have a beneficial curative effect because it's supporting that process of regeneration, okay? So, like I said, you can see here that by putting it on the side of your head, the radiances are penetrating in and they're actually reaching the trigeminal nerve, the root, and that big triangular section will say, that was called a ganglion or is called a ganglion. And you can see this in this picture, another angle for you visual learners. We're just looking at this where it comes through the skull and then it comes in and it's you know embedded in the bone, in the muscles, in the teeth, in the lacrimal gland, by the eye, above the eye, through the nose. And this is where we would say these are the projections of the nerve. And when you look at that from another angle, what you'll see is these are the areas. So, you know, you had the three branches and these branches, these colors correspond to the three branches and where people will experience pain. Okay. So they actually come out through the bone into the skin and these kind of things, the projection. And this is what we're looking at with local treatment. In other words, we just looked under the hood of what's happening when we put the device on our face and on our head to treat. So Dr. Anna talked about neurology four. So when you look at this local treatment, what you see, neurology four, and I'm just going to read the slides, scan both sides of the face, just like in the diagram. And you're going to do it for about 10 minutes a side at 50 hertz. And of course, the note is eyes closed when you're treating your face. Now, when you look at these lines, I showed you earlier about the scanning. You do not need to start at the center of your cheek and work your way out. Like that star in the center pattern. We're giving you a starting point so you have some idea what to do, but you could prefer to just scan without touching the skin back and forth. You could prefer to go up and down. You could prefer to go in circles. Any way you do that is fine. The main thing you want to do, if we go back to this picture, is you want to be treating the projections, okay, 
you want to be treating the nerves in the skin. So you can do that in whatever way you want. We're just saying the way we recommend you do it is through scanning the area, okay? And so the other thing here is, we'll get into this a little bit more later. It says 10 minutes, but that might be, may not be the case for you in your particular case, all right? And also, you'll notice we break it up into three stages. So you could do a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes here, uh, and then scanning along the side. So now let's look at the next part of the local treatment. Okay, so what we have here, I'm going to orientate you on this. Uh, this is a cross section and you're looking up into the cross section, okay? So it goes from about the middle of the eye socket to the bump on the back of my head, that cross section. And when we look, we're looking upward. So you're looking up and you see the eye from the bottom and this is the nasal cavity you're looking into. And why I wanted to show you this is because I want you to see a few things here that relate to when you're placing the delta or the palm on your skin, on your head, what you're doing here. So in here inside these yellow circles, this is that trigeminal nerve root. Remember the one just after the, just before the ganglion said trigeminal nerve root. So that's the actual nerve root going back into this area. We'll just say the brain stem, or you could call it the pons midbrain. And we're going to want to treat that as well, because if you remember from our Jean's talk, he said there's an atrophy that happens in that area. So when it comes to regeneration, we want to treat all of the nerve process and pathway involved in that, including the source of where the nerve emanates from, which in this case is that pons or midbrain or brainstem. Now, the yellow dotted line or the black with the yellow I put here, because what you'll notice is this is about the, we're looking here, this is the ear. So it's about the same, uh, let's say, going back in my head as about my ear. And when you look at this, the way it's sliced, we're looking at about the, from the eye socket to the back of the head, that bump. So there's a line right here, okay? And it just touches my ear. So when we look at the next slide, you'll see this dotted line on the mannequin corresponds to the slice that we had here. And this dotted line here comes down and you can picture the spine and the brain stem are down here. It corresponds to this line right here, okay? As no, as in other words, that slice is going down this way. So for this part of the local treatment, what we wanna do, we wanna treat around here. I mean, you don't have to be pinpoint accurate. That's another thing with the treatments to note. If you're in a general area, that's fine. But we want to treat the brain stem area as well as the nerve pathway. Okay, now the mannequin seems to have quite a long distance between the corner of the eye and the ear, whereas mine is pretty short. Uh, so it depends on how the person's head is structured of how many points will get in here. But we'll say four, just to keep, uh, keep it simple. So you're treating the brain stem, the nerve root, the ganglion, and then of course you have the projections and the face you treat here, and you're treating a little lower uh, because this is you know generalized area of where it'll be. And when you look at the size of the terminal on my head, okay, if I go just above my ear, okay, and then just down on my ear, for me, I like to put it so that my ear, so it goes behind my ear, and then just in front of my ear, and then just down here, okay? Really simple. And it says in the corner, you're gonna do this for two minutes a point at five and 50 hertz. Now, this is just a general recommendation. For you, it could be different starting out. Some people, when you get coma therapy, the palm is a, let's say, entry level device. So it doesn't come with the same support as the Comer Delta. With the Comer Delta, this comes with full lifetime aftercare support. So as long as you own this device, 
We are there for you anytime you need support or help. Of course, we're also there with the Palm, but not to the same level. So with the Comer Delta, we'd set you up, can set you up. Okay, here's the treatment schedule. Start here, here, and here, and I'm going to go through that in a minute. But I wanted to mention it here, and you'll notice this treatment we call Neurology 4A. This is not in the current user guide, okay? This is a supplement to the current treatment. Now, the next part we want to look at are the systemic treatments. So, Anna talked about the universal treatments, and this is what we mean by systemic treatments. You'll see this one says universal three, and it's we're, we're addressing the blood and lymph. Again, we ask the question, why? Well, if you think about healing, blood is central to everything in the body. Okay, It's basically at the top of the pyramid in terms of importance of function. Blood doesn't function, yeah, and it needs to be maintained very specifically and the body puts a lot of resources to make sure our blood is in like in the exact right let's say ph level it needs to be and when we use the treatment what we're doing if you think of the importance of the blood nutrients and oxygen in toxins and out as well as messages in messages out so if there's no if the messages stop the nutrients don't get in or are impeded in some way and the toxins can't get out, this is going to slow down the healing process, no matter what's happening in the body. So we, we want to provide this support. And anywhere we treat the blood in these points, if you look at the mannequin here, if you look at these points, anywhere you treat the blood, especially here in the neck, and especially here in the groin area, there are a lot of lymph nodes. Also in the armpit, okay, in the armpits, uh, there's a couple here, but this area here especially, Everywhere you treat the blood, you treat the lymph. And the lymph is part of the toxins out, and it's also part of the immune system and how that works. So it's very simple. I'll show you again my pictures here. I put my finger here, and you know, there's a muscle running down my neck, and then I have my throat here, and there's a bit of soft tissue right in between. And when I put my finger there, I can feel my pulse. And that is where I put the delta or coma therapy. So I'm going to put the delta right on there. And when you're thinking about placing treatment, what I want you to think about, the infrared laser is in the center. So we're always going to be aiming, and that's directly behind the center of the back. So we're always going to be aiming to put the infrared laser on the location we want to treat. Now, remember I said you don't have to be pinpoint accurate. So if you look at my hand, if I want to treat this knuckle, so if I'm here or here or here or here or here or here, it's not going to be that big a deal. Ideal if I can get on the exact spot, but not essential. Because what that means is why it's not essential. When the radiances go into the body, they spread out. So if you're off a little bit from that point, the radiances will reach it because they spread out as they go into the tissue. And we don't want you to obsess about it and then stress about it because we don't want you to have unnecessary stress. So it's fine to do it that way. And then when it comes to the armpit, you just, you don't have to, but you put your finger in and just feel for the pulse. Or, you know, you have a lot of soft, your armpit is soft tissue. You can just put it straight up in your armpit. Okay. I think you can see me on the screen there. And then with the groin area, if you think about your groin, uh, there's going to be a big muscle going down here, a big muscle in here. And then you have the, you know, your ab ab abdominal muscles in your groin down here. So there's soft, real soft spot in here. And you won't be able to feel your pulse. Well, maybe you will. I can't feel mine. And a lot of people I speak with can't feel theirs unless you really push down, maybe. But just go for the soft tissue there. Okay. And the elbows is just the soft tissue in the elbows between the, like you can feel your pulse there. Now, if you find the femoral arteries inconvenient to treat, let's say, for example, you're sitting around in the living room and your family are around, you don't really want to pull your pants down and treat your femoral arteries, then what you can do is behind your knee, that soft tissue behind your knee, there's also an arterial point there. So you can use that as a substitute if it's inconvenient to treat your femoral arteries for whatever reason, okay? Now, when we look at so this is one systemic treatment, and we'll look at one more, and this is to give you an idea, because remember what we said, why do we do these things? So the next one, 
and I had mentioned Universal 5. And we use this in terms of reducing harmful stress. Now, why we say harmful is because there's good stress as well. So we don't want to eliminate all stress, as in going to the gym or do, having a walk, exercising is a good stress. Harmful stress, good stress builds us up. Harmful stress tears us down. So we use treatments to mitigate the effects of the harmful stress. And being ill and in a lot of pain is enormously stressful, unimaginably so. I, I haven't experienced what people with trigeminal neuralgia go through. Uh, so I can't relate, but I can have had some pain and it was very stressful. So we use treatments to bring the body back into, and this is one for example, to mitigate that stress. So in other words, when we're in that stress state, we're in what we call fight or flight. So we either want to run away or we want to, have, we want to use all our resources to fight. And we don't heal in that place. Okay, that's really good short term if we need to do something that requires immediate action in these things. But if we live in that place, we can't heal. So we use this treatment as an example to bring the body from fight or flight to rest and digest. And when we're in that what we call rest and digest place, this is where it's optimal for healing. And so we use treatments to facilitate that. Okay. Now, I won't go into details about the points on this treatment because that would be a whole presentation in and of itself, but suffice to say, it helps to bring the body to that place. And so this is why we say it's important to not just anybody who's worked with me, works with Comer Therapy, you'll know we're always saying, don't just do local treatment. You want to do systemic as well to support the whole process, to help the body to regenerate. Because if the body's in a place that can't regenerate, even if you do lots of local treatment, it's only going to be minimal progress compared to the holistic approach, okay? Now, another systemic treatment is the spinal cord. Why, why bother treating the spinal cord? Well, this is part of your central nervous system, okay? And this is a mediator of everything that's going on in the body. And part of that is not only the signals that travel through the nerves, but you also have cerebral spinal fluid. And so if you picture it, your brain is actually surrounded. Uh, it's in, a, let's say, a bath of cerebral spinal fluid. And that area we looked at with the trigeminal nerve root, that area and there especially, uh, is in a what they call a ventricle with, or a bioventricle uh, with cerebral spinal fluid. So this is really central, even though not much talked about, to the health of the body and the healing process. And so we want to treat this. I'll stop there. There's more we could say, but I think that's enough. And then when we look next, we'll see liver and spleen. So spleen is really important. It's here on your left side. Okay, your stomach is here, your spleen is over here under your heart and your ribs. We want to treat that. That's a very important uh, organ to treat for a variety of reasons. One of them relates to the blood and your immune and how that functions. Because if you remember Leslie's talk, and that can be linked again in the show notes or in the YouTube, she talked about a lot of people with trigeminal neuralgia can have viral infections, long-standing chronic ones that are more or less hidden that can affect things. So one of the things she talks about is detox. So when you think about these systemic treatments, they're also going to support detoxification. So you think about the liver, the kidneys. These are organs that are part of elimination and liver is also the let's say this is the biochemist of the body it processes all the chemicals all the nutrients all the nutraceuticals that are going into the body as well as the medications so supporting the liver is important to offset some of the effects of the medications that are less than desirable and when you think of the detoxification and the systemic treatments as well think about if you have a bathtub and the drains are plugged and there's dirty water in it, you want to get that dirty water out. So the liver, the kidneys, detoxification helps get the dirty water out. 
and then you can run clean water in and that's that regenerative process okay so we want to we want to facilitate that so this gives you an idea it's not everything about systemic treatments but it gives you some insight of the what we treat the why we treat the how we treat it and now we'll get into a little bit of the when to treat it okay because i said earlier about a treatment protocol we can start people out on that so this is a, an example may be pertinent may not for you depending on what's happening but you're going to do the treatments and courses so in other words you use the coma therapy at we say here let's say monday wednesday and friday first thing in the morning or sometime in the morning you get up have your cup of tea you're going to do universal three your blood then you're going to do at some point in the morning could be the same time you're going to do the nerve projection the neurology four, which is the trigeminal nerve branches in your face. And we're saying just do one minute per branch. Now, why I'm saying that in this is because if you go to a clinic, let's say you go to Leslie's clinic, uh, she's gonna have the expertise to see what's happening for you, what state your body's in, and can, let's say, tailor treatments more to you for what's happening. If you're by yourself at home, we're always going to recommend a conservative, gentle starting point because some people come to us and they can't even touch their face. Some people come to us and they can do a lot of treatment. So this one here is a very conservative starting point. So we're saying just do one minute per branch. So you're just going to scan right here for a minute. I'm going a little fast just so you can obviously see it scanning. You're going to scan up here for a minute. Then you're going to scan down here for a minute we're going to say do both sides okay even if the pain is predominantly here or all here we're still going to recommend even if you don't do it as much to still do the other side as well okay and then if you look at monday wednesday friday in the pm you'll see you're going to want to treat your spinal cord so that could be involving the palm okay and you lay the palm on the mattress of your bed. And what I do, I set the palm for 10 minutes, okay? So I set the top palm for 10 minutes, set it for the setting. I'm gonna put it at a thousand hertz. I'll turn it on, okay, you can see it's on. You can't see the infrared laser right now because uh, it's infrared. And this is a DSLR camera with an infrared filter. So I would lay this on my mattress, okay, for 10 minutes on my bed or maybe on the sofa. And then I'm going to lay on it, okay? And then after a minute, maybe it's 50 seconds, maybe it's a minute and 10, I'm going to shimmy down the sofa or the bed a little bit more. And then a minute later, I'm going to shimmy a bit more till I cover all those areas on my back because you remember this treatment here, okay? So palm is really easy to do your back with. Delta takes a bit more work, but you can certainly do it. I'm going to show you a little trick I use, okay? So I actually take the delta, you can see me, and I hold the cord, I know it looks funny, but it compresses time because I can be reading a book and treating my back. So I actually put it here, I set it to 10 minutes again, and then you can see I just move it down and it's treating. And then I move it down and it's treating. Mariette, this one is for you. <laughs> so it's you can really do that uh you're not able to see me okay uh where are we to oh yes well i'll i'll show you that at the end uh remind me to come back to it because you're i'm only that little square sorry i forgot about that uh <laughs> so you can treat let's go back to here so a spinal cord in the evening and then again neurology for the branches okay and not only the branches but the nerve root and the midbrain the pawns the brain stem and then liver and again you can break these treatments up to however you want in the day let maybe you have 10 minutes when you first get out of bed maybe you don't have any more time until 11 o'clock when you're getting something done or Maybe you're doing something and you need to compress time and you do the treatment while you're doing something else because you can hold the Delta. Here's the battery. I put the battery in my pocket and I'm treating my face while I'm doing something else. Sometimes we have to multitask. 
okay? So you break the treatments up into whatever way fits for you. Why I say that is because you don't want to, uh, we become used to, if we get a treatment protocol that says do ABC, then we fit ourselves into the protocol. But with comotherapy, we're saying the opposite. Fit the protocol into your life. This is part of becoming that really active in your own healing. And I'll get into that a little bit more in strategies. I'll talk about Elaine's uh, example. And we can also link that in the YouTube video. I don't know if it'll go here or here. Okay, so let's go here. And you'll see we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday in the AM and PM. Similar, but instead of doing universal three, we're going to do, uh, it says reduce stress. Sorry, that should say universal five, reduce stress. And that's about a 25 minute treatment. And then we're going to do neurology four and four A again to treat the trigeminal nerve. Again, one minute a branch uh, for each side. And then again, we're going to do the spinal cord and the spleen. And then you'll see Sunday take a break. I usually put that in for people because if it's seven days a week and people need a day somewhere where they they need some flexibility. So this Sunday break, you can put that break in on Wednesday if you want and then change it up. Again, suggestions and guidelines so you have some structure to work with rather than you get the device and you're totally in the dark and you're like, well, what do I do with this? So we want to give you the structure to, to let's say, get you started but we don't want you to stay stuck in any structure. This is to get you moving, and then you start to become more aware of your body, and this is part of the strategy. So let's go there now. Oh yeah, before I go there, let's look at this. So this is a screenshot, you know, because where do these treatments come from? This is a screenshot of the user guide, okay? And you'll see here, uh, I think the video will play. Here we go. You'll see moving down the side, these are all the different uh, sections of the book. So you could scroll, and this uh, link will go out. You can scroll down the side through the book to find a treatment you're looking for. Okay, we're looking for Universal 3, so we can just scroll through to Universal 3, step by step. Oh, there's Universal 1, so we slow down, we come in here. Okay, we scroll to the Universal 3. So on this side, is going to give you the instructions of what to do, and they're gonna to correspond to the points on the mannequin, because you got a point one here and a point one here, okay? And then you say, oh, well, I'm looking for neurology four. You can also use the index here, go to the neurology section, and then come down and you find neurology four. And again, here's the instructions on what to do for the trigeminal nerve, trigeminal neuropathy, and that'll correspond to the points here. And this point two was what we used to include for the ganglion. Remember that point inside the brain, uh, just below the brain, deep inside the skull. So now we've changed that with that 4A. That's going to be the change to the treatment. So the points come from the book. There's also, I'll just show you here quickly on my phone. There's also a Comra app that can be for people who like applications that you can use from your phone as well, okay? And I like the desktop, but people are on their phone, so yeah, you have some options. And next we'll get into the treatment strategies now. And this is gonna be the final section, just to let you know. So acute attack, what to do. If you're having an acute attack, Highly likely you're not going to want to touch your space with comotherapy, okay? Because, of course, everything's happening at that point. So you can hold it off your face, okay? And do sure, short duration treatments. You're going to, the tendency would be to want to, you know, I need this pain to go away, so I'm going to hold it there till it goes away. But if you picture when you're having a, an attack, how it's let's say flared up at that point that is going to be very let's say sensitive very aggravated so if you try and put too much energy into an aggravated point you're going to aggravate it more but if you do a short amount of treatment you're going to relax it okay you picture a, the the nerve at that point the tissue at that point 
is incapacitated because there's so much pain. So you can give it a little amount of treatment and it's going to relax it a bit. But if you try and treat and treat and treat and treat till the pain goes away, it can exacerbate it. I'm not saying that happens for everyone, but I'm saying for people who are having an acute attack, because the tendency is to you want it to go away, don't just treat and treat and treat. Do a short amount of treatment, let's say a minute, turn the device off. I know you want it to go away. I wish it would go away instantly for sure. Uh, but you'll have to wait, a, let's say 15, 20 minutes, then do another short amount of treatment. That's just one strategy. Each person is different, so I'm just giving you some pointers. Next, improvement relapse improvement relapse so what we mean by that is generally what we see in severe chronic conditions and i'll actually i'll just draw i'll just do a little pen mark here so this is the baseline where people start so they'll do treatments and they'll feel a bit better and then they'll have a relapse then they'll, and then they'll feel a bit better and then they'll have a relapse and what's going to happen is and then they'll feel better and then they'll have a relapse and this one could be a little bit further and so on and so forth. What's happening is what you're going to notice is the se severity will be less worse and the duration will be shorter between each relapse. So you're, the overall it's improving, but the body is learning to, let's say, regain its balance to heal that condition. And in any healing process, healing means change. Okay. So what that means is there will be changes, but we don't always know what, how they'll unfold, what they'll look like. So when I recommend, you know, the treatments and just starting very conservatively, this is to do what we can so that the healing, the changes are not too abrupt or unnecessarily uh, abrupt. So whereas if we go at it, let's say hammer and tongs, where we really go at it, we can have very abrupt changes, which can be very uncomfortable. So we want to take it a step by step, especially where you have it at home. When you go to a clinic, the clinicians got experience uh, and they can do a lot of treatments because they're paying attention to a lot of things in their body. Like they'll ask you, how did you sleep? What's your appetite like? Do you have any bowel movements? And they'll ask you all kinds of questions. And those questions are actually showing the clinician, they're giving it the clinician some insights of where your body is at in terms of its ability to adapt and when the body is not in a ability when its ability to adapt is diminished then we need to be a little more conservative okay and when you're at home because you have it at home and you're not having to go out to the clinic and visit you can take it a bit more conservatively because you have that uh, let's say space to do that. Whereas when you go to a clinic, they're going to see you for a couple of weeks. So they're going to go boom, 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 boom with treatments and you're out the door. Okay. So now when it comes to part of the when in terms of treatment, we say core TX is treatment, sorry, courses of treatment versus break. And what do we do over the long term? So when we look at that graph I just made, that little jagged line, as you get, let's say, treat until you feel better and then take a break and then do another course of treatment and then take a break and another course of treatment and then take a break. And you say, OK, well, how long should the breaks be? So once you get, let's say, feeling better so that you're somewhat stable in terms of uh, your condition, you're, you're stabilized and you're feeling better, then take a break of try a week or two weeks. But if in that period at any time, remember what Anna said, that man waited too long. So he waited five to six months. So if you're in your break and then you start to feel anything happening, then resume again. And then on your next break, so treat for a course of let's say three, four weeks or until you're feeling better, then you can take another break. And if during that break, you notice you're six days in and you're still feeling good and then you seven or eight, you're like, mm, I'm starting to feel a little concerned. I don't want anything to happen. Then start another course of treatment. And what you'll find over time is the duration between the courses of treatment, your break periods will get longer and longer. And I mentioned Elaine's case earlier. Uh, she didn't have trigeminal neuralgia. She's dealing with another thing. But what she shares in her uh, 
testimonial video. She talks about how she was learning to tune into her body more and more and more as she used coma therapy. And she got to the point, and she could tell you if you look at the video, it'll be more detailed, but she got to the point where she could tell when she needed to do a treatment. She could just sense it. And that will happen to you. And that's what I meant earlier when I said it works its way into your life surreptitiously uh, over time. And this is part of being your own best health detective, part of being, and this is what Anna said, produces the best results is when the person is actively involved in their own healing process. Because what's happening and why we say don't fit yourself to the book, fit the book to yourself, is because what's happening is through the active treatment of yourself with coma therapy, or perhaps you're using a different physical medicine device or energy medicine device, what you're doing is you're actively engaging in that relationship with your body in a new way. And in that, you start to tune into how your body feels. Now with coma therapy, uh, uh, an added bonus to that is because people can get hooked on you know, if the device pinches or pokes or prods or zaps or whatever, uh, and then you get that, you know, you get dependent on that in order to feel okay, that pinch or poke or prick or prod or whatever it is. But with coma therapy, it's not designed to be felt. Okay, you don't feel anything with coma therapy. It's non-invasive. It's not meant to do those things. And so what happens is you can't rely on the device in terms of the poker or prod or pinch, you start to tune into your body instead and what's happening in your body. And that is hugely beneficial because let's say with trigeminal neuralgia, and this is one of the strategies with traveling and changes the environment. Let's say you developed this tuning into your body and all of a sudden you go, gee, you know, I'm going to my in-laws house and nothing against the in-laws. It's just as an example. Uh, and we had some tension the last time we were there, you know, there was some tensions in the house, and I found that pretty stressful. Let me take my coma with me, and then if I need to excuse myself, I can go to the bedroom and do a treatment, or I can treat myself right in the living room if you're comfortable doing that, uh, because you can sense on some level that you need to take care of yourself, or you're traveling, you know, to be three o'clock in the morning in a foreign country, and you don't speak the language, and knowing that you have something that you can use to take care of your health is great peace of mind. And then you notice instantly your body's more relaxed because you have something you can do in the moment to take care of yourself. Okay. Now, Akar, yes, I saw the question, and that's sort of the comes in together with the idea of prophylaxis because for prophylactic treatments or when they treat in advance. Uh, like for example, here in in in, uh, in Russia, in Siberia, the summer, autumn, the change of season is so strong that you know people tend to have like uh, aggravation of symptoms between these two big seasons. So you would know, you would ex expect that you know comes spring and my condition worsens. So I'm starting my prophylactic course, preventative course early let's say february march and then when spring comes when i know it's about to happen my body is ready the same uh, was an example with the man who went to uh, some dental procedure so he knew he was afraid of that he will go for some uh, dental work he will uh, have an acute attack so he went proactively uh, preventatively to, to get the treatment so the question about prophylaxis is really just extension of the same idea is you learn your body, you learn how it works, and you predict its responses. And sometimes, you know, when you have to travel and you have to get stressful environment, and you know your body could be affected uh, in a negative way. Now, you do universal treatments, you do the local treatments, and as you do that, as you learn how to prevent it, it becomes a second nature. It becomes so natural that eventually, I mean, that's what I'm saying, just forget about the book eventually because you don't need the book because you have the body and through that language of pain or even some light twitching or even some discomfort you can directly and instantly relate oh, okay something is going on no i need to attend to that need in the body and you can do it with comrade first obviously there could be some tissue damage but then later you learn 
what kind of behavioral patterns led to that discomfort. It could be emotional parts, it could be mental patterns, it could be, you know, lack of physical activity patterns. But then either way, you know, it doesn't really matter what led to it, but basically you learn to be your best health detective. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Arjan. Yeah, I appreciate you adding that in. That's good. And uh, I was going to say something in relation to that too. Yes, in Elaine's video as well, one of the points I really enjoyed that she made in there, she talked about going from using the book to after a while she didn't need the book. She understood the treatments and she could just adapt the treatment to whatever was happening for her. And this is another part of that surreptitious because I don't use the book. Well, of course, I mean, for me, I'm talking to people about it every day, so that's a bit different. But people end up not needing the book because they understand what the frequencies are for, and what, they, what they're gonna do, and how to support themselves. And you'll develop that too. This is part of why I say it can be overwhelming at first, but it works its way into your life, another part. Okay, so I touched on one big treatment versus multiple small treatments. Uh, originally, when we were talking about the acute attack, so I think that's okay. Now, other diseases and conditions. So let's say, for example, you have diabetes, constipation, high blood pressure, chronic tension in your neck and shoulders. You're going to want to include, and Anne already brought this up, you want to include some treatment points to address all of these. Now, of course, if you've got 15 different things happening, uh, you only have so many hours in a day, so you may need to do what we call triage. In other words, what are the most important things? Make sure they're central to the treatment, and then cycle in the other parts occasionally once or twice a week, okay? And that can often be enough. So in other words, why I'm bringing this up in terms of treatment strategies, it needs to be the whole picture, you know, because some people will come and they have no, they say, well, I, I you know, I have knee pain. And they're focused on the knee pain, uh, but they also have lower back pain, but they weren't talking about the lower back pain, but what's happening is the knee has been compensating for something in the lower back, so those are connected. Why I say that is there's gonna be the body is one whole, so everything is going to be connected in some way in terms of if there's some pathologic process, some disease or illness happening. So it's best to include everything that's going on and then approach it that way. Now, one of the things you can use to help you be your own best health detective, uh, especially getting started, is the Comer Wellness Test. Uh, I won't go into much detail about it here. There will be a link in the YouTube video. Uh, you can go to that. But to touch on it, it helps you tune in to your body and how it's feeling and what its state of being is. And there's a few key points, you know, stuff like if you aren't sleeping, you're pushing too hard, uh, or you don't have any appetite, or your appetite's increasing and your sleep's improving, or you're feeling irritable, or, you know, your, your anxiety's going up. Now, any one of these on their own may not be indicative, but when you get a, a, let's say, a grouping of these things happening, they start to indicate whether the body is being, well, I'm pushing myself too hard, and that can be in any way. It could be I'm working too many hours, it could be I'm trying to get too many things done and pressurizing myself, uh, it could be any variety of things. I'm, I'm going to the gym too much, I'm doing too much treatment for where my body is at. Why I say that is you can't over-treat yourself with comotherapy as in damage any tissues. But when you're in a, you know, as Anna said and Arjan touched on, when the body's in a, uh, let's say, depleted state, and, why, and I also touched on it with the small treatments, multiple versus one big one, is those cells have a limited capacity to benefit from the treatment. And so we need to, this is helping you to tune into that in order to improve your health. And just simply with other therapies and medications, uh, Anna talked about it, you can use comotherapy with anything else you're doing. It'll potentiate the effects of homeopathy. It'll work beautifully with acupuncture. It will work with any detox program you're using. It'll help medications be more effective as well as mitigate the side effects of them. Uh, so 
Yeah, you can use it with anything. And it can be combined with other energetic medicine modalities, so to speak. I think I'll stop there, Arjan, uh, unless you have some things to add. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Garrett. Thank you. But let's um, talk about some oh, questions. One thing I did want to do uh, before I forget, mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't see it. So people say, you know, it's hard to treat my back. So this is the way I do it. So I use the cord. I mean, it may look funny, but I use the cord, okay? And I hold the delta on my back, and then I just lower the cord every minute. Yeah, I can see that, Garrett. Yes. Yeah. Thank and you. It works really good. So, okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's try <clears throat> answer questions. Well, those are not covered yet. Maxim, can you help me with uh, questions, please? Uh, Arjan, basically we were answering uh, most of the questions as uh, we uh, went. Uh, so, just... Uh, uh, some uh, of the recent questions if it can be used with uh, uh, some other devices like uh, PEMF or SENAR or TENS, for example, just is it possible to use Comra combined with other other devices, but I think we yes. the, the simple answer is yes, but you know, uh, I know that when Anna was working at the hospital, initially she began having Comra side by side with uh, devices like TENS, devices like PEMF. Uh, eventually, she walked her way just through just sheer clinical experience when it comes to the physical modalities. She found Comra most comprehensive, although now and then she would add, for example, uh, electrotherapy for a specific condition because she knows that, you know, for this specific condition, you know, the patient would need, you know, would really benefit from this kind of energy and she would add it to it. But should answer is yes, you can combine. You can, yes. Uh, I'll say one thing with the PEMF, uh, depending on the type of device, it can be pretty strong. Uh, so I usually recommend people to space them out. So if you sit down, you do a session of PEMF, I wouldn't use Comrade at the same time. Let the body work with the support given, then do another session with Comra. Uh, or do the session success su in succession, not together. Uh, yeah, that would be for me with the PEMF. And it all depends if someone has it turned right up high, or maybe it's a, you know, the mat people lay on and it's much lower intensity, then you could probably do them together. But when you get into the higher intensity PEMF, you want to give that some space, is my experience. But also when it comes to uh, the state of uh, state of your body, uh, when people come from just from having, let's say, a major surgery, or have you know high blood sugar and other complications, and you know, and I was saying that you can't really use some of these stronger uh, biophysical modalities. She, she simply can't because the body is too weak. So she would use only Comra, let's say, first three four days. And the body was sustaining just fine, even right after surgery, for example, major surgery. And then gradually she would add, let's say, physical exercises. Gradually she would add massage, you know, uh, things like that. Yeah, and just to add to that too, you know, when someone's just coming out of a severe uh, chronic condition, let's say, even like a stroke, if someone comes out of a stroke condition, you remember Anna saying with the Bell's palsy uh, in the man, they had to wait till the condition stabilized before they could do a facial massage. Yes. So in other words, they're tuned into what the body is capable of handling. Because if they did a facial massage before the body stabilized, it actually aggravates the situation. Exactly. So there's some skill and stuff required. And this is why coma therapy is good for at home because it's non-invasive. So you don't need all those skills just some common sense and some just uh, conservative step-by-step -step approach, yeah. Okay, um, any more questions, Maxim? Uh, there was uh, also some uh, general questions like, uh, for example, 
uh, how do we uh, choose points for treatment frequency timing but uh, i mean generally and also how to approach uh, whether to choose 980 or 905 of the, on the first attempt uh, device and so on but i think uh, most of this was covered uh, during the presentations yeah uh, Karen, do you want to reply yeah sure I'll, I'll chime in a little bit if in the conservative way of approaching so generally i'll just put it this way if someone comes to me phones me and they say look i'm you know 75 i've got this and that going on I'm generally going to recommend for an older person a 980, uh, but it all depends on the situation because some people can be hugely robust at 75 and other people not so robust at 75. And we're all different. I'm not, there's no criticism about that. We're just different. So what's going to be more suited to that person and how they approach life and their lifestyle and what's happening and the severity of the condition? So that's one aspect. The other one is uh, if you can do the best of both worlds with Comra, from my perspective, is if you can get the strong and the palm. OK, so let's say the delta strong. Here I have the probe terminal on because I saw a question about the probe. But if you can't, let's say and you, you let's say you say, well, I just have money for the Comra delta strong. So say, OK, then you need to start really conservatively and work your way up. So whereas if you had the 980 or the palm, you have much more leeway on how much you can treat right away, let's say hammer and tongs. And I say hammer and tongs because most people have this idea and I'm not criticizing anyone. If this much is good, more must be better. So with that, the 980 as in the soft delta and the palm are gonna be the most forgiving in that situation. Again, not that coma therapy is gonna hurt someone, but if you push the body too hard, you're gonna have, let's say, you're gonna have the healing means change, it can be uncomfortable because 905 is very direct acting and fast acting compared to the other ones. So if the person is going to be able to, you know, proceed conservatively, even though they want results yesterday, uh, then I would say 905 is good if it's a long-standing chronic degenerative condition, especially if it's a severe one like some autoimmune condition, these kind of things. But general conditions, 980 is going to be going to be fine. And the palm, in let's say general conditions, is going to be fine. And if people are are not sure what to do, then they can always start with the palm. And you know, people start with the palm when they're not sure. And then they often will get the delta later because they go, oh, wow, I like the palm, so let me get the delta now. So you can't really lose in that respect. I wanted to ask, I think you got it. Thank you. I wanted to ask uh, Leslie, I know you're here, uh, because we had the first webinar, remember, on November 1st, uh, when I and Leslie was presenting, and then we had uh, quite a few questions coming up. Uh, to our emails and uh, social media. Leslie, do you have something uh, you want to answer if people were like coming to you with some questions that you would like to share and we have it on on video? I don't hear you though. We don't hear you yet, yes, Leslie. We see you though. Oh, Milian, I think we need to allow. I wasn't able to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. I wasn't able to unmute myself. Thank you. Um, well, I've had some questions, um, you know, about like like you're answering basically which which device to purchase. I think that is the 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 hardest part for the people to really choose. And you know, as you're very well recommending, is to get the Palm, and if you can, also the 905. So you really have um choices however even if you get the 905 and start out with it i just say just treat gentler just don't treat as long 
and um, you should really be safe with that. So the beautiful thing is with Delta, there's there's no there are really no side effects. Nothing seriously can happen. It can just sometimes be a little bit of overstimulation for people with trigeminal because the nerves can be a little bit overstimulated. But that's why I always start when they purchase the 905. I'll always start with just one minute. That's it. Just do one minute. And then wait, you know, and then see how you react. And we build up gradually. Um, so we've had a few patients that have reached out and have purchased the the Delta. And we're just, you know, very gently working our way up to then treating the spine and treating the whole systemic. And just, just do it slowly and nothing will happen to you. And I, I just think really any anything that you can afford, because obviously there's a price difference. So... If you can just deform the palm, then absolutely use the palm and we'll just adjust your treatments, do a bit more treatments and, and just adjust as we go along. So that's the beauty of this. It's really, um, there's there's something for everybody. Okay. okay. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'll just answer this question. Someone asked about the probe. So you can take the medical terminal off. For some people, they'll have uh, neuropathy in their tongue or teeth. Now, you'll see the probe is pretty big, okay? So it's not gonna be applicable because I can't get at the back of my front teeth going this way, obviously. But uh, I can put this in my mouth and I can treat my tongue. So I'll just show you. So I can put it in my mouth and treat, uh, and you say, well, can I do the same thing with the medical? Yes, but it'll be a slower process. So if you can use the probe, if you need the probe, not everyone does, of course, it's gonna be a more direct treatment and it's gonna be faster acting than if you're going through the tissues with the medical terminal. And people do like it in certain situations. And of course you can use it for ear, nose, throat and anal and vaginal uh, medical conditions as well so i don't know if that answers the question they just said uh, i didn't see when you had the oh yeah probe terminal yeah thank you thank you Avril. okay well thank you everybody for joining today uh, again as i said this will be a reference webinar and we'll just have the recording on the youtube and whenever you know you have questions rewatch it again because so much information this is like 10 years of our collective group experience compressed in two hours again thank you so much for joining and you know where to find us our emails right to us thank you thank you bye bye everybody Okay, take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.